Sons of Gondor, my brothers. Today we are playing a 1v1 match on the beautiful map Westfold as the Gondor faction, this time against Isengard in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22. The White City versus the White Hand. The clash of good and evil, Yin Yang. The White Wizard, Gandalf, against the White Wizard, Saruman. Westfold, a rocky, lightly wooded land in the western region of Rohan. And this time, the Odin King cannot say any longer where was Gondor when Westfold fell. Because trust me, I will try my best to not make Westfold fall tonight. It's time for lunch. Tell me again why I came. So on this map, you know, when you play against Isengard or Mordor, I played a lot of games recently on this map as Gondor against evil factions like Isengard and Mordor. I actually think that the best opening you can actually have is with the barracks. Because Gondor has like a very rough early game, especially on a map like this, which has plenty of settlements. So with your two soldier battalion, you will have a rough time to compete with the speed of Isengard, with the spam of Rohan and Mordor. For that reason, I'm assuming, you know, it's gonna be a little bit slower, so your Gondor Knights and your stable is gonna be a bit delayed, but you will be able to create much more pressure at the beginning of the game, which I believe is essential against factions like Isengard and Mordor. On the bright side, however, there are plenty of settlements, I mean, you know, creeps like war players, you know, trolley in the middle, goblin layers, a lot of them. That means collecting the power points we need to unlock the ranger special summon later on from the spellbook of Gondor is going to be a little bit easier. With the Hobbit, we can now also go for the creeping after capturing this one. So we can creep the goblin layer actually and use this soldier now to grab those two settlements. And we can also try to pressure him again with the third soldier. Now, the creep is going to be important for us to get the stable upon the field before Isengard grows rich. As we have not managed to deal any chronicle damage to him, unfortunately. I was expecting to be able to take down the mill, but no, the mill is just too tanky. Okay, I mean, it's good. It's not a big, it's not a big deal. I mean, at this point, we are actually at least delaying him, um, you know, from creeping, I guess. <laughs> And the stable is required. We need also a blacksmith though, because the blacksmith, the earlier you build it, the faster it's gonna hit level 2, which is requirement for you to get the chance to purchase upgrades like forge blades and heavy armor, and we need at bare minimum the forge blades. So listen, when you play as Connor against Isengard, you don't really need to rush heavy armor, because heavy armor is only needed if you actually fight against other units, right? But what you need instead is Forge Blades to get the burst damage and also the shields from the stable level 2 to get more resistant against arrows, which will uh, buff your Gondor Knight significantly against tower damage. So basically when you go inside the Isengard base, you will take way less reduce, you know, way less damage, which can, or not they can, it's like important for your survivability. You need to be able to survive, otherwise your tow the towers from Isengard are gonna one-shot you and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so the question is now what we're gonna do with the first Gondor Knight. That's the golden question. The creep is so slow, you know, maybe it would be a better choice if he wouldn't creep, but it's okay. At least we can creep slowly but surely and get, you know, start uh, start the collection of the power points. We need to now to get the second Gondor Knight. There we go. Oh, I'm blind actually. <laughs> Okay, I mean, I was expecting to be able to go for a second already, dude. This game fell so slow for me all of a sudden. Okay, let's creep the goblin there now at the bottom side. Okay, goblin, I come on now, I need you, dude. I'm losing momentum. Sometimes this game, even though we increase the speed a lot in the patch 2.22, it still feels a little bit too slow for my personal taste. But also in this game, you know, in the version 2.22, everything is a bit faster now. So soldiers, peasants, like literally every unit hero is moving a little bit faster. To have a little bit more fast paced game because i don't know about you guys but I, i'm not a person i don't like to wait three minutes to recruit a hero or five minutes five minutes to purchase an upgrade now i think the time should be invested much more wisely into fighting on the battlefield i think that's much much better riders riders okay so we are actually holding a great amount of map control but the question is for how long so without the barracks, I think it's going to be nearly impossible for us to be able to compete with the pikeman spam, which should be starting very, very soon. And it looks like Isengard wasn't able to creep too much. 
which is good for us because we need a lot of power points to get to the point in which we can summon the rangers but first of all you want to use one of your gondor knights to pressure the enemy mills and the second one you can actually start creeping with okay don't cash float oh here's already a pikeman on the field that's not good <laughs> Uh, our hobbit is level 5 by the way the berry green took is popping off he can also cloak commit the settlement from the opponent player this way he cannot recapture the settlement so that's also one of the easiest way to actually deny your opponent to you know get a mill in this way he will also get way less money which is important to shut down isengard faction and also more of faction so let's creep the goblin there right off the bat we have almost two power points collected already that's pretty nice let's capture this one Get cloaked with the Peregrine Tuk, also known as the Full of a Tuk, as Gandalf would like to call him every single time. Oh, nice. Oh, let's go for the trample. Elvin would be the girl. And when you play against Isengard, there is no chance Isengard can cover this that quickly. You know what I'm saying? Isengard needs three power points after the Warchant to go actually for the Hinted Land, which also will kind of delay his industry. Dude, my Gondor Knights are in slow motion mode. Please move, dude. Don't drive me crazy. Oh, I don't want to lose them, though. Please don't die. Just disengage now. You gotta bring the second one. He has no Pikeman. I mean, he has Pikeman now, but we can avoid that. Okay, we have actually... Dude, you see, with this much map, map control, how much money we got? <laughs> you know, I didn't check my money. It was like, it was like a 3,000. Maybe we could just skip everything and go for Gandalf, but that's not gonna be a great call because you know i think pressuring the enemy base is a bit more valuable we can go for gandalf later on because this is a map which gives isengard the chance to get the chance to come back so basically you cannot shut down isengard fully after the first couple of minutes into the game that's not possible so long story short it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to finish this game off with the gondor against isengard I will see the glory days of Gondor. Okay, for Gondor, boys. For Gondor, for Gondor. Oh, he's feeding me now. Okay, so we have the shields incoming. That's good. Now we need blades too. And Boromir can creep the trolley in the middle. Boromir is an investment into the mid to lead game. So, you know, hope for the best, but be prepared for the wars. Okay, that should be fine. We can just get the money and get out. Get the money and get out. Yes, sir. You ain't stealing money from me. That's not gonna happen. That's not happening, bro. That's not happening. So we need to go now for the beast rush. And Boromir level 4 gives additional damage. But also his level 5 can actually be good against Isengard. Because in order to get fear resistance as Isengard, you need either to have level 3 units, Saruman, or Lord's level 5. Which is not gonna happen anytime soon. So he's capturing the outpost. He's paying attention to the works. Okay, let's go, boys. If we can take down this... Uruk, that would be actually huge. So let's summon the rangers to shoot down the pikemen. The pikemen are taking less damage when they are in the porcupine formation. They are tanky. And he keeps producing. Oh, that was close. We gotta go for a heal now. Oh, but he has the work riders. And also look at the minimap. He's pressuring us all the time. Let's use heal. The pikes, they are dealing so much damage to our units. That's unbelievable. Oh, Boromir, the captain. We can also start capturing the own outpost now. The last thing what we want is that Isengard getting all the power, all the outposts. You know what I'm saying? That's not gonna happening. Oh, oh, that's risky. It's like there's too many pikemen. You know what I'm saying? So I'm assuming I will be eventually forced to recruit some soldiers later on. But I will try my best to win without that. So instead of going for rangers, I want to go for the marketplace very soon and then recruit some archers instead of soldiers. And Boromir is level 4. Look at him, boys. He's like a true G Gondorian. You know what I'm saying? Like the true warrior. That's why Denethor was always proud at his son. But, you know, you should... Guys, quick tip from me. When you're ever gonna be a parent in the near future, or maybe you are already, don't be a daddy like Denethor is, guys. Imagine, put yourself under the skin of Faramir. Imagine how it feels like when you're being abandoned by your own daddy. You know what I'm saying? I think that has to be... One of the worst things ever, you know? We killed actually quite a lot of pikemen. We have also collected a lot of power points, which is going to be needed uh, to recruit the white wizard. But we need to kind of reclaim the map control too. We have lost a lot of map control. And reclaiming it is also easier said than done because he has just way too many pikemen and we couldn't take down the Uruk pit either, right? Which is not a good thing. But now we have the second brother, the captain of Gondor himself. But I I will give you the chance, what your father did it. I will give you the chance to show your quality in this game. 
bring me victory in this game, Faramir. If we lose this, Faramir, it's all on you, brother. It's all on you. Let's go. Four. Riders, riders, swords. And our Hobbit is actually still cloaked there, you know. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's what you also are supposed to do, by the way. When you play Gondor against Isengard, you want to keep pressuring this piece. Because if he don't do that, he will get the chance to capture our outpost next to the base. He might go for the siege weapons and start sieging us already. And that's hard to defend. It's at this stage of the game, we need a lot of power points. We need to try to collect enough power points for the Eagle Summon. If the Eagle Summon later on, we can actually summon the Eagles, kill the Lords, and go for a juicy wizard blast with the Gandalf. But first of all, we need to get Gandalf on the field. Oh, 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 run, Gondor Knights, run, you fools. Don't lose the level 4. Level 4 is extremely important. Okay, boys, so Faram uh, Faramir is also leveling up. That's good, you know. They are very underrated, those Gondor heroes. And you see Isengard is spamming lots of pikes on you. You can recruit them, try to get some levels. So basically, if you get Faramir level 5 and Boromir level 4, it's actually a lot of improvement of your strength and also the, the armor of your army because these two brothers are going to be able to make your army deal 60% more damage and a 50% more armor. Okay, so... War power. I mean, I'm very tempted to go for the, for the Eagle Summon, but I don't think... Oh my goodness, he has too many pikemen, boys. He has just too many pikemen. Pikemen Fiesta is happening here. And he's going rich because I cannot stop him with my Gondor Knights all alone. Come on now, we need Gandalf. Go for the rush. Let's heal them to make sure that they have full health. We need to also try to pressure the map, but he's demolishing everything just in time to deny us the power points. You know what I'm saying? Oh, don't die. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Come on. Get oh, be careful. Dude, he has too many pikemen. You know, he has just too many of them. Okay, so please don't die level 6. I need you. I need you. And our ranger summon is still on cooldown, so we gotta be careful about that. Um, he has war riders up on the field. Let's pressure the farm. Let's take down the outpost slowly but surely. Oh, he has actually, he's buying a lot of outposts. And destroying them is not a big deal, but it's time consuming. You know what I'm saying? Actually, a smart idea from him to keep me away from his own base. Now we will be building up the marketplace for us. Let's turn Gandalf into the Gandalf the White. Marketplace now for more money. Because this game, you know, marketplace is just like Boromir and Faramir. Investment into the lead game. After you purchase the upgrades on the marketplace, the longer the game goes on, the better the investment is going to be. You will get more and more money collected from the Grand Harvest and also from the Iron Ore, especially on a map like this. Like, here on this map, you might have actually at some point maybe eight farms outside. And imagine on each of them, you get 40%. Oh, look at this. Hey, hey, hey. War Riders. Watch this, boys. Gandalf, do it. Do your shenanigan. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is the best hero in the game, boys. You have to watch out. The last thing that you want is to feed him, to make him more tanky and to make his abilities deal more damage. Okay, that's good. Um, we, need grand, we need Grand Harvest though. Not Iron Ore, we need Iron Ore later on. Okay, so let's recapture this stuff. I mean, he's actually pressuring us all the time. And he has still a great amount of map control. But our Hobbit is... By the way, guys, uh, can you tell me please in the comment section down below how long my... Oh, I jinxed it. I, he used Palante to reveal my Hobbit, guys. I was about to ask you, if you can let me know in the comment section down below, how long our hobbit Peregrine took was able to deny the opening player the farm or the settlement. Like a minute. You know, I want to know if it's going to be 5 minutes, 8 minutes. Just let me know in the comments, please. I think he died, but he was actually doing a phenomenal job for us. Okay, so our only goal is to avoid lords. That's very important. The second we run into the range from Lourdes, he will be crippling our Gandalf. And even though he's, one of, he's the best hero in the game, but he is also one of the squishiest heroes in, in the game. It means if he is getting crippled, the chances of us be getting away is pretty low. Oh, Easter Delight. Bork Riders. Oh my goodness, the Pikeman spam. <laughs> the Pikeman spam. Let's use the Rangers. There is no Orc or no, that's, <laughs> that's only elves. Okay. Oh, he has too many pikemen. But we can now with Gandalf, you can actually get power points collected. 
So when you get kind of on a field, it's hard for Isengard to have full map control. Back away! Steady! Men of Gondor! And also we need to start capturing some outposts. So in this matchup, and you have seen me playing eventually also against uh, Mordor as Isengard. The mistake what I did is I was trying to go to his main castle all the time. I think that's just a wrong approach on a map like this. I think on this map it's important to move step by step to your opening castle. So you need to make sure to capture all the outposts first before you can go for the final push. So for that reason we will at least capture the bottom side. You know? Oh my goodness, my rangers. Ah, it's okay, they are from the summon anyway. That doesn't really hurt me. Let's capture this. Give up the pressure all the time. I want to build the archer range inside the castle just in case I might lose it at the outpost. I don't want that to happen. It's going to delay. Take this, <laughs> pikeman. Dude, Ganav is actually popping. Popping off, boys. Popping off. Ganav, stand please and fight. Level 6, boys. There we go. Four levels away from getting to level 10. I mean, getting level 10 is a, is a dream. Like, you might be able to get kind of level 10 once in like 10 games. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to happen unless the game is going to last a really long time. Against Isengard, the War of Power is actually quite significant. Against factions like Mordor, not that much, you know? And also, we need only one power point in a quarter. One power point in a quarter to be able to call the eagles. Once again, the plan is simple. We're gonna summon the eagles only to kill lords. And the second lord is that Gandalf can shine bright like a diamond, just like a white wizard does. Now, let's capture the bottom outpost too. This one, we can capture it. There we go. And try to destroy the outpost. So, we need to. In order to. Oh, he's coming, boys. Okay. Uh. The problem is with my Gandalf, I cannot really approach, and I'm not ready to defend this. And what I wanted to see on a map like this, you need to use your mobility advantage, you know? You don't want to be forcing a fight, because obviously he has counter units. He's countering all our horses with like one unit, the Isengard Uru Pikeman. And for that reason, instead of going for the fight... Oh... I mean, I'm down. I'm gonna actually visa plus this, no problem, because my Gandalf cannot approach the big army anyway. We need archers, but we have no fire yet. We need one more archer to get the archer range level 2. Fishing for power... Oh my goodness, Gandalf. Fishing for power points is what is important now. We need to get power points unlocked ASAP. Um, just to make sure that we can kill the lords before we can commit with our Gandalf, you know? Okay, fire upgrade is incoming. Oh, but it's going to be tough to defend this area, boys. It's going to be really tough. You have only Boromir, Faramir, one tower and two Gondonites. But the Gondonites, they are kind of pointless. They cannot really do a lot with this many pikemen around the Isengard army, you know? It's just too risky. Um, I want to give them also fire upgrade just to make them a bit stronger. And you got to try to draw his attention, you know? To something else. So he can leave our outpost kind of kind of alone, you know? We have not the strength to defend this yet. Now more ranges are required. Um... So he's scared of a big fight. I don't know why. I think he had the chance to easily, easily destroy the outpost. But he's just too, too, too scared. And I don't think it's a good idea. Oh, he want to commit. Oh, okay. I mean, that's the thing, you know. You cannot really catch Gandalf. You need to force a fight and force him to engage on you. If this makes sense. Oh my goodness. Luckily, the pikemen are not in the formation. They would have, they would have wrecked my horses. You know, what he's doing is so pointless. Because I can always disengage. I don't need to fight here, right? I don't get I don't gain anything from fighting there. Basically. Most people are not able to understand. This, uh, until you create pressure on the enemy castle, the Gandalf doesn't need to fight you, right? And if you want to be able to kill Gandalf, you need to force him to engage on you. Because if he doesn't want to fight, you cannot catch him. You can always disengage. Lord is not as fast as Gandalf when he's mounted. Right? And with that being said, you, when you want to kill Gandalf, then start sieging. You know, force him to come for a visa plus. Force him to make a risky play. Then you can punish him for that. Be still. Be still. Be watchful. Those are the your guard, we the archery range. Okay, but also map control is the key to victory, so never leave map control. Even though our money is not, not looking too bad, but we will also start recruiting some more trebuchet, some more rangers, 
So the money will be definitely invested in long terms and we shouldn't have that much money in the bank. So now we know where the loot and everybody is, we can actually go for a base rush. And that's also one of the things you need to kind of understand about this game. The second you see the only threat against our hero Gandalf, who is Lord, and when we see him being used offensively, we know in his castle he has nothing to defend himself. It means that's the time for us to shine, that's the time for us to commit. So he has a couple of units, but we can blast the pikemen, they have no chance. Then we can trample the combos. Oh my goodness, Gandalf, stop it, dude. How, did you see how much damage my Gandalf took? Oh, that was also... <laughs> that was one of the worst visa plus ever, dude. That's unbelievable. Bail, 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 dude. My Gandalf almost got solo killed by one pikeman because he was trying to... I don't know why, he was trying to run through the pikeman. In the porcupine formation, pikeman is such a big counter to every mounted hero in the game, but... Great news, but now we have the Eagle Special Summon. So he's pressuring our castle. I'm assuming he wanna go for a siege, but I don't think he has the army he needs to keep this attack successful. You need, at this point of the game, when you see this many rangers, you need a lot of combos, war riders, lords, and also ideally even Sarma. Okay, so please, 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 please destroy the outpost. Now we gotta try to commit on this one before the siege begins, before we actually get damaged. So for that reason, you know, just for the, for the worst case scenario, we can start recruiting some trebuchet. And I wanna commit on him though. I mean, now I can do that with the eagles. I mean, now I can do that, you know? We shall win this war. Be watchful. Oh my goodness, he has pikemen only, but it's good for me, because pikes are weak against archers, so watch now. Watch now what I'm gonna do to this guy, boys. Watch, oh my goodness, <laughs> this one pikeman is crushing. Gandalf, go, 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 blast him. Dude, don't, oh, I cannot believe it. I didn't lose anything all game, and I'm losing a level 5 Gondor, I just like that. Are you kidding me? We must take the fight to them. We shall win this war. Now I am angry, boys. Mm. Now is the time for us to shine. Dude, we have also a lot of leadership. So Farami needs a little bit more than, you know, he can kill one worker, a Lamarimir worker, and he would be level 5. Let's chunk lords a little bit. Then we can make sure that the eagles are going to be one-shotting him. Okay, now we can commit on this fight. No problemo. Everything bueno. Let's force a fight. In the meantime, siege the other base or the castle. Now we are talking. Now we have the 100% armor with Gandalf being around. Farami plus Gandalf. Is he gonna go for... I'm gonna summon the eagles. Where is lords? Lords, you are in. Oh, I see. You know, we can use the Alvin Wood. He has a freezing rain. If lords dies, dude, that's gonna create so much momentum for us. But the eagles are dying in a few seconds against those combos. The, the combos are just too good. But take this from me, Frandia, on your face, son. There we go, boys. There we go. There we go. There we go. The power of Gandalf. The eagles, though. <laughs> Dude, you know what? We, you have seen the coordination, right? We chunked him with the warning arrow from Faramir. That we, you know, he was like almost 50% HP left. And then the eagles could finish him off quite fast. Even though he had combos around, but he was not focusing them right off the bat. The thing is, when you play against Gondor and you hear the eagles sound, just hear them. You need to immediately select, select all your combos and target the eagles. The eagles are very vulnerable against fire. They will die in a few seconds. But if you don't focus them down, they will crush your entire army. So they are extremely powerful, but glass cannons. Oh, here's another army there, but it's okay. Now Lourdes is dead. We don't need to be afraid of anything. And we are also only five power points away from the EOD special summon. Now we can also work our way up to the bottom right side and start sieging also from the other side, okay? So once again, like I said a couple of minutes ago, it's important for us to do that step by step. Outpost for outpost, settlement for settlement. And now we have even trebuchet upon the field, that's good. Now we can capture this outpost too, it looks like it's gonna be uncontested. The, the important thing is though, if you try to capture something, you don't wanna lose something in, in exchange. So you don't wanna trade one for one, because then you gain nothing because he gains something in exchange, right? So you want to be coming out ahead in those trades. So if, even if you have to trade, make sure the trade you do is not like, for example, Gandalf or Saruman. It's not worth it. Nothing is worth to lose your Gandalf. 
So, when you see opportunity to kill like Saruman or Lourdes, don't risk it with Ken. Oh, he missed the cripple! Hey, look, guys. He missed the cripple. Take this, son. Look this. Boom! What a juicy with a blast! Oh, it's a fireball. Don't hurt him, but we have heal. We have heal. We are good. We are good. We are good. But he got junked so much! Holy quackamole, boys. Prepare yourself. Rally together, knights. Onward. Be on your guard, men. Be alert. Guard this area. Archers. Oh, he's molding right now, boys. He's molding right now. And look at this. We are only three power points away from the Army of the Dead special summon too. Like the Army of the Dead can legit bring us to victory. Look at the minimap. He doesn't know what he's supposed to do. I think he lost all the water at his too. It means he has literally nothing to pressure out the, out the, out the map control. That's a mistake. That's a mistake I see players, uh, you know, who are like a medium level player are doing. They are actually doing a phenomenal start into the game. They know the beginning of the game. They know the, they know the mid game. But the longer the game goes on, the less they care. They take care of the map control. Map control is essential because Isengard will keep losing army now. Especially once we bring our trebuchet. That's going to be the moment Isengard will uh, suffer a lot. You know, he will lose a lot of units. And in order to replace the units he's losing, in order, in order to revive the heroes he will lose, you need a lot of money. Like tens of thousands, as Saruman would like to say. You know what I'm saying? The economy is very important, and for that reason, map control is the key to victory. Let us prepare for this war. We've got to hold them all! Let them Prepare for battle! We've got to hold them all! Oh, Lords is coming, but no, no, no. I'm paying attention, my friend. Get chunked. Can I kill him, please? What? Please? That's gonna be close. Oh, it's not even close. Maybe, dude. The guy, the guy was just able to survive with one HP. One HP, dude. One HP. If he would have died. I would have committed with Gandalf. Let's go. Our Eagle Summon is reloading, so we need to kind of play it slow. We are actually having a great lead. We have the middle area, we have the bottom ear area completely. I think he has like only one or two mils outside. That's all he got. And now we have also Trebuchet. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's going to be hard. Normally, Gondor should not be able to reach this point of the game against Isengard. Normally, Isengard should be the one who is pressuring the Gondor castle non-stop. Not the other way around. But Venorion is still learning, you know what I'm saying? He's improving quite, fa quite fast, though. I'm afraid he will be able to beat me very, very soon. Uh, yeah, so I can see that happening very soon because I'm getting old, boys. I'm getting old, you know what I'm saying? I'm not the youngest anymore. I'm 31 years old, boys. You know what I'm saying? My reaction time is not the greatest. Oh, he's gonna lose a lot. Those my trebuchet are gonna hit like a truck. Oh, he wanna flank me from behind, but that's good for me because I can just take down the entire map, entire base in the meantime. He has nothing to defend himself in the base. I like the attempt, but I think it's just too risky to come around this because that will give me so much time. You cannot rotate that fast with combos while you can do that with conduct knights. You know, he has used to freezing rain. We have Farami level 7. Just keep pressuring all the time. We have taken down like 40% of the of the beast. We have AOD, but I'm not gonna summon it. I'm not gonna summon the AOD boys. Not planning to do that. I'm gonna try to win this without AOD. Use Fireball on our combos. Our, co our units have no leadership now. So we are gonna take a lot of damage from the combos. And for that reason, we need to be all. You need to know as a great leader when to engage and also when to disengage. Like a tactical retreat. It's very important to not lose every unit you have. Never overcommit, you know? Know the limits of your army. Did you hear something? Ambush formation. We've been the smithy. Knights have finished here. Stronger. Riders! The enemy is Hold upon us! Over there. The enemy is upon us! Drive it to ruin! Set the balance! Take we must be stopped! Come on, men, we have them! We must counter this evil! I carry the okay, so... <laughs> we have literally every single outpost now in the map. So, he's doomed. He has no more money, trust me, one boys. Like, Isengard is a faction that can generate a lot of money, but also needs a lot of money. In, compared to all the other factions. Mordor doesn't even need that much. Your armory, your combos, your upgrades are so expensive, you know? So in order to make like one combo, you need to invest like around about 2,500 resources, which is a lot. It's like half the price of Saruman, you know what I'm saying? So for that reason, you need a lot of map control. 
But he needs war riders for that. He needs that. You know, he needs war riders. He needs to keep pressuring like he did at the beginning of the game. He was doing good, but then he actually became kind of a bit uh, sloppy in this game. But he has a huge army, though. I mean, he has a huge... You know, one part of me says, Hey, Shanks, just use EOD <laughs> and screw his army. But no, I'm not going to try to use EOD here. I'm going to actually try to win without the use of the EOD. Just to test the limits of my army. You know what I'm saying? Because... I have such look my money boys. We have over 9,000, you know, <laughs> over 10,000 actually. Yeah, we are rich, right? We can even revive everything when we lose everything, but we don't want to happen. But, you know, I want to test the limit of my Archer army with Farami Boromi leadership because that's something you don't see every single day. You don't see Farami Boromi every single day. And you don't also see them getting level 5 or level 7 in this case for Faramir and level 5 for Boromir. The Horn of Gondor is kind of useless because he has now a Saruman, which will grant him fear resistance. I'm assuming because he went for Freezing Rain, for the Industry and for the Tinted Land, his Balrog is far, far away. Far, far, far away. I think he needs like still over 10 power points for that. And that's also something you need to kind of get good at in long terms. You know, you need to kind of have an understanding about... Okay, oh my goodness. <laughs> Not like this. Do it. <laughs> Sarah so actually getting inside the jeans. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is like you need to kind of have like a like a feeling, like a sixth sense, if you want to say so, about the PowerPoint department of your opponent. You know, you need to understand, okay, he killed this, this, that, this. How many power points can he actually have? He was recently using the rain for the second time. Since then over a minute passed through, but we didn't really fight a lot. He didn't kill he didn't really kill a lot. So I'm assuming he has maybe nine power points now in the bank. I don't know. But I'm still certain that he's far away from his Balrog. I mean, even if he has a Balrog, even if he somehow manages to destroy my castle, we have so much map control, we can just simply buy the castle back. We are also going to be command points capped very soon. We cannot recruit any more units anyway. Let's open the gate, get out with the trebuchet. Bring them here. Start or keep sieging all the time. Now we're going to move from both the sides. We're going to pressure with Rangers, Faramir, Boromir from the bottom side, and Gandalf and the Gondor Knights from the top side. We need to force him to split his army. Oh my goodness, this is army worthy of Mordor. Look at this army, dude. Oh, he has Ballista too. I'm very tempted to summon the Rohirrim here because the Ballista is hurting me. Outranging my army, archers, and also knocking them down and one-shotting them. Okay, let's summon the Rangers here. Oh, he want to commit to this fight? I don't know about that. He underestimates the rangers. They need to focus down the heroes very soon. The second we can I focus a hero. Oh, Saruman. Let's kill, so focus Saruman. Please. He has such a weird hitbox. He blasted me. But he's running it down. He's underestimating my tower, my rangers with the statue behind. The statue has been recently destroyed, but he tanked them for like 20 seconds. That's not going to be good for you, my friend. That's not going to be good for you, my friend. Oh, Saruman is no more. He, dude, the rangers, they are glass cannons. You can kill them in a few seconds, but if you ignore their DPS, they will like pew, 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 pew. Like in Star Wars, they will crush you. They, like, especially, you know, these uh, weak heroes in terms of defensive capabilities, like Saruman, Gandalf, you know, even Faramir, they, are, they have like low defense. They are like glass cannons. They're about ditching damage, like Legolas, for example. Legolas is not a tank. Legolas will deal insane amount of damage, but he's also very squishy, just like Saruman is. So you need to be careful. Place him behind the army. Don't risk it. He's just too expensive. Okay, we have almost 5 power points collected after the EOD, which we have not summoned one single time yet. Once again, we are trying to win this game without the use of the EOD. Gondor is so powerful that you don't need to use EOD. Maybe. That's gonna be the title of this uh, video on YouTube, guys. And by the way, guys, if you enjoy this kind of videos, please make sure to leave a like on this video and also subscribe for more content like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching the videos. Oh, by the way, there have always so many views on the channel. Thank you very much. I didn't even know that there are so many fans of PFME 1 with the same passion like I have from all around the world. And it really kind of makes me extremely happy and proud to see many, many people playing or not playing, but having interest in seeing this content. Thank you very much. Okay, we can summon the Rohirrim now. And go for the for the peace. Oh, he wanna fight. So we can summon them and... Oh my goodness, he has such a... Why is he scared, dude? When you just do what he does, you will never be able to win the game. He's just too afraid of taking a fight. But then he will lose it step by step. 
you know like at some point of the game you gotta take a risk especially now when you're in a in a in a prison situation you are being surrounded and the only way to break through this jail is actually by forcing a fight but he's waiting for me to force a fight which he you know which will get him nothing you know what i'm saying he's getting more and more ballista let's damage the buildings go with the gunnerites uh, we need to avoid lurts though man he has such a huge army i would love to go inside the jeans and go for a visa plus but i can't as long as lurts is remaining on the field so we gotta keep the distance with gandalf just to make sure that he's not getting crippled almost level nine we have so much money we cannot even recruit any more units that's the problem okay we have to <laughs> upgrades on the phone dude we are as strong as we can eventually be you know what i'm saying that's how strong we are in this game that's how strong we are okay uh, this is the army look at this mini map <laughs> but he has like one single yeah he, i believe he has zero i believe he has legit zero meals outside uh, he has one okay I, behind my base behind the outpost okay that's what it is okay uh let's go for the siege and by the way he also went for the freezing rain which is also not good what is my gandalf doing i'm gonna heal him for the worst case scenario <laughs> dude my gandalf it's like st shang stop you know telling us stories go for fight already it's an order from the wife man oh you want to take this outpost i'm gonna let this happen i guess because i want to actually not summon the eagles to not kill anything but lords lords is my target we killed okay he wanna fight Ooh, nice trebuchet shot on your face son boom oh he dodged this one okay we gotta oh he's trying to kill the trebuchet but our rings are ditching out damage every single second i wanna go ham boys we need to kind of make sure to kill this guy somehow let's summon the eagles kill this and then we go ham with gandalf one in arrow two no, he doesn't even need to be wanting arrows. Parami is level 9, by the way. My, my friend, Parami, you have shown quality in this scheme. I'm proud of you. There's no more pikemen on the field. It means our Gondonites can go ham. And watch this. Take this. Gandalf. The White Rider. Oh, he lost everything. He's going to call it GG, boys. And that's it. GG, well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. We won without the EOD. I think I deserved your like for this one. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a track. And as always... Stay beyond standards. Peace out.